What's up guys? Let me begin by obviously apologizing for not making a video last week. Uh, the holidays kind of got in the way and I know that's happened before and I'm only human. So I apologize but you may have seen a tweet if you follow me on Twitter which good time for the plug. My Twitter handle is the same thing as my username for YouTube. So you can find me on there. Um, and I talk to just about everybody. So, I sent out a tweet basically predicting the Bills to lose, and I needed to pick some sort of hysterically insane way. So I picked them to lose 4-3, to because that seems like, you know, something that could happen against the Chiefs. And that's not exactly what happened, but you guys saw how it went down. It, qual it qualifies to me as hysterically insane. Just ridiculous. I, do a 30 for 30 on it, that seems to be the the consensus on Twitter, at least. And before I, like, assess the game, I just want to bring up, because people are overreacting, like, talking about firing racks and just, like, not no, not really, like, bringing back Marone or anything, but just kind of, we're going insane now, because we're 5-6, and six, which is worse than we were last year at 6-5. and five. And I've talked about this a million times, probably, on these videos, and I just stress it so much, it's continuity. You don't have continuity on the roster. You don't have continuity on the coaching staff. And that's... There it is. And, and you, don't, you don't have continuity at the most important position, which is quarterback. I know in the defense, you got mostly the same guys uh, returning from last year. You, got, you throw in Darby. Um, you know, you lose Aaron Williams to injury. But you got mostly the same guys. You lose Denoris Searcy. So you think they should be good. But I think, I mean, I think it's a little short-sighted to assume that with another new coordinator, they're, I mean, how many have we been through? George Edwards, Dave Wanstead, uh, Jim Schwartz, Mike Patton before that. I mean, this is like four or five in like five years. This is ridiculous. And it might be a little bit short. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm really not. I, I just think it might have been a little bit short-sighted to assume that they would be that good again for the third year in a row. Um, you know, even so look at Seattle's making some sort of regression a little bit. They were very good for a while, but Pittsburgh just hung 30, 30 points on them at in Seattle. They still won, but that's not like Seattle to score that many points. Um, but mostly it, it falls back on the coaching staff to me and the quarterback. You have another another new coach which takes time for him to cycle his players in and out. You got, and especially on offense, quarterback Tyrod Taylor, obviously. But, like, Robert Woods is in his third year, and this is the fifth different quarterback he's catching passes from. You got, like, EJ, Jeff Tool for one game, if he, if Woods played, or even, I don't remember. That was Kansas City, too. Thad Lewis, Kyle Orton. And now Tyrod Taylor. Like, dude, he's been in the league five years. He's caught court. He's thinking with five different quarterbacks as the starter. Sammy's already dealt with three. It's, and, and he's only been in the league a year and a half. That's, it, you can't... I mean, you just can't overstate the importance of continuity at quarterback. Look at what the Patriots have. Tom Brady. Doesn't matter. They have co consistency. Coach, quarterback. We have none of that. And we can't make the playoffs. We find ourselves being a mediocre team every year. It just might just have, it might have something to do with it. I don't. Know. I'm throwing that out there. You guys can catch it and bring it back, or you know, throw it back, or take it and run with it. It's just it. It might take time. I hope it takes time. I. It, I hope. I, do, I hope it doesn't take time. Sorry, I'm very stressed about this. I'm, I'm emotionally high strung about the Bills right now, and I'm sure you guys are too. Cause especially this is the way they lost the Chiefs because they're up ten nothing and they look like they're about to put their foot on Kansas City's throat. Uh, you know, McCoy's fumble. The Bill, like, sorry, McCoy fumbles basically inside the red zone. I don't know if he was exactly inside the red zone, but the Bills are clearly going down to get points. Uh, the the Bills got into the. Kansas City Territory, the first four drives. Four. They ended up with ten points. Kansas City got into the Bills' territory one time, I believe, in their first three drives or something. 
and ended up with seven points. So I, there it is. Um, you, when you don't put teams away, things like that happen. You had the opportunity to do it, and they didn't. And it was in the first half when they were still throwing Sammy Watkins. So that was disappointing to see. And to me, the most disappointing part of this game is not throwing to Sammy Watkins in the second half. I can get over the challenges. Honestly, I can. The, the Hogan one is inexcusable to me. I don't... Th I cannot blame Rex Ryan for not challenging the Macklin catch because I'm not sure that would have been overturned. Are you? He caught it. It was in his arm. But yeah, it kind of dragged, but he held it the whole time. Is that a catch? I, I think it is. I'm not convinced that gets overturned. Is it worth challenging because it's a big play and it, you know, it might take away some of their momentum? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But I don't blame him for not doing it. I do blame him for not challenging the Hogan play. But the most upsetting thing was not throwing Sammy Watkins in the second half. Targeting him one time. That's nuts. Um, especially after what he did in the first half. Six for 158, two touchdowns. And he was torching Sean Smith. And then the excuse I hear after the game is, oh, well, they put a safety over top of him. So why is Sammy running nothing but fly routes? Like, if you have a safety helping somebody over top, why don't you just run routes underneath? That's, it, that's the most frustrating thing to me. Um, and I don't know if that's on Tyrod, Roman. Like, it could be could be play calling, it could be Tyrod, just not, um, maybe he was running, I, I saw a stat at Yards Per Pass on uh, Twitter, good follow, yardsperpass.com, I think, I can't remember his Twitter handle, search Yards Per Pass, he's a good guy, and he tweets, um, you know, the GIFs and stuff, and you get to see a lot of the game that you might have missed, and he's a good follow. Uh, I think he showed that Sammy ran like 16 just fly patterns, and like everything else was like five or less. And it's oh my god. Tyrod doesn't throw over the middle of the field. We've talked about that. Um, he's he missed Hogan wide open over the middle of the field. He missed Clay on uh, one of the early throws that could have been a touchdown that ended up leading to that first field goal. And that really wasn't even in the middle of the field. Um, but that does seem to be somewhat of a problem for him. My thing with Tyrod is he's great out of the pocket. I think nobody could, oh, great, you know, whatever. He's really good when he's outside the pocket or when the play breaks down and he needs to find somebody breaking off, one of, breaking off a route. He's good at finding somebody when he's doing that. But when he has to stand in the pocket and deliver, he's kind of a one-read quarterback. And then he looks to get out of the pocket. And I think, that I mean, that has to, that, that, that that's part of his development, I would say, is to go through his reads. That's, you know, every quarterback is going to go through that. But it's something he obviously, obviously needs to get better at. Um, what was the other point I wanted to bring up? Oh, defense. Rex's game plan made sense. And don't tell me it didn't. Even if you're upset about guys dropping into coverage and whatnot, Rex's game plan made sense. Let me trust my corners. They're very good. Gilmore and Darby, they're Pro Bowl caliber, all pro caliber possibly, against Jeremy Macklin and whoever. Chris Conley almost scored a touchdown against the Bills. Who? And like Josh Wilson, these are their guys. Let me trust my corners against their receivers and make sure Alex Smith doesn't nickel and dime me to death with screen passes and short throws. That makes sense, because that's what Alex Smith does. And instead, he starts slinging dimes down the field to Jeremy Macklin, which, you know, you can do if you're not getting hit. And Alex Smith basically only got hit one time, and it was roughing the pass penalty, which is stupid by Jerry Hughes. Who knows? Who knew Jeremy Macklin was going to have such a good game? Just running past our corners. And, oh, God, it's so frustrating. And, obviously, I get it. Uh, there was no adjustment middle of the game. It seemed like the Bills were content doing that over and over. Uh, they had a couple chances at interceptions, but so did the Chiefs. 
Um, Darby looked like he, he tipped one almost to himself, could have returned for a touchdown. Roby on a third down screen to Macklin could have jumped the route and probably and definitely returned it for a touchdown. It would have been a tough pass to catch because of how quick he was moving and whatever. <sighs> Just missed opportunities. And those, and there you go. Five and six. Don't give up now. Because everybody just keeps coming back to us. Pittsburgh keeps coming back to us. The Chiefs are 6-5 and five now, but the Jets, as long as you stay within one game of the Jets, you got them at the end of the season, so you could pass them and on the tiebreaker. And the Raiders, probably going to fall out, maybe. And then here you go, here's the Texans. You need the tiebreaker against the Texans, that's who you play this week. What have the Texans done? Only won four straight. How many teams, because this is true for the Bills, how many teams have ever faced, I don't know the answer, Four or three street, excuse me, three weeks in a row. Played a team on a four game win streak. Patriots were on like a nine game win streak. Chiefs were on a four game win streak. T Texans now on a four game win streak. How many times has that happened? It's going to be nice to be back at home, but the Texans are playing really well right now. They've allowed th three of their last of four p opponents, they've only allowed six points. And they allowed 17 to the Jets. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's 35 points in four games. That's nine points per game. Less than that. Ever since getting killed by Miami, Houston's really stepped up. Um, they have J.J. Watt. They have DeAndre Hopkins, too. The, probably one of the best receivers in football. Definitely one of the best receivers in football. Top five for sure. Probably top three. I'd listen to your argument with Antonio Brown and whoever. Des Bryant, whatever. But DeAndre Hopkins is doing it with Brian Horner, like Ryan Mallett. Losers at quarterback, basically. And that's where, you know, the difference is made. And J.J. Watt's been just a force. And the Texans' defense has really been a lot better. I've got stats to prove it. And let's see, defense. First downs allowed per game. These are stats that matter. First downs allowed per game. Texans, ninth, about 19. Uh, third down percentage. Here you go. The Texans are first at 26%. They only allow their opponents to convert 26% of their third downs. And they're sixth and, or ninth in first downs allowed per game. And best in third down percentage. So it's, you know, those stats kind of go hand in hand. Because teams aren't getting that many first downs against them because of this third down. It's not like teams are just getting first downs on first and second down. It's not happening. Next closest is the Rams, 31%. So the you know Texans got an edge there. Uh, let's see yards per game. I know that they're up there recently. Uh, I apologize for not having this immediately right away. Sixth in yards per game um, on offense. They are, and I'm frozen. I'm frozen on offense. There uh, we talked about Hoyer. And Hopkins, the running game doesn't scare me at all. Grimes, Br Blue, and Chris Polk. There you go. Um, 13th on offense, 357 yards per game. A lot of that is Hopkins. Uh, they're 19th running football, less than 100 yards per game. 13th passing. 23rd in points per game. They don't score a whole lot of points. But they have Hopkins. They have J.J. Watt. Like I said, they don't run the ball effectively. This is like a game... Look at the quarterbacks the Bills play, and this is the reason why I'm like holding out hope, and it's stupid. Why would I think the Bills are going to win out? Why? They're 5-6. and six. What sense would it make for them to win five straight? But they play Brian Hoyer, Sam Bradford, and the Eagles, who are a mess. Kirk Cousins, they're playing better, but it's Kirk Cousins. And Matt Castle, and then the Jets' Ryan Fitzpatrick. Beat these guys, please. They should have beat Alex Smith. I understand that you lost to Tom Brady. That makes sense. But Rex said it. The consistency. They're not consistent enough. They could win all five. They could lose all five. They're that kind of team. And I don't even know what to pick. I'm going to, because I don't know what to pick, I'm going to pick the Bills to lose. It'll probably be something hilarious again. Nah, I don't know. Texans are playing good on defense, so the Bills are probably only going to get about, I don't know, 17 points. Let's go with that. Texans, 2017, basic score, 2017 Texans. Guys, thanks for coming to this final video. As always, I appreciate it. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you guys are thinking. I hope you guys aren't being too cynical, um, but I understand.
Let me know what you're thinking for the rest of the season. Have fun Sunday. Try to. Above all else, go Bills.